The frame memory system in the X series provides over 2,000 HD frames of storage capacity. But how do you load and save that massive amount of data quickly with a new feature called Real Time Backup and Restore? So I'm going to go over to the frame memory menu here. And if I go down to external device, you can see that I have two new buttons down here. Backup to DDR-VTR and Restore from DDR-VTR. I'm going to go to the restore because I've already backed up the frame memory and I want to show you how we load it in quickly. So you can see here that I have two unique steps. Step one is to load from memory and that's a metadata file. When I backed it up, it has to save what all this information is. Those would be the file names, the folder names, etc., etc. So I'm going to hit the file name data button and it's going to take me a jump over to the file menu. And I'm going to select file number two. Now, it's kind of a funny file name, but when I do frame memory backups, I code them with the time code on the XDCAM disk that it was laid to. So I'm looking for time code 0034. So if I go over to my device control module here, kind of a unique Sony only feature with a jog knob with a magnetic clutch, etc., I'm going to shuttle back until I find 34. You can jog and mark that's close enough, 3329. I'm going to load this into there so it's now basically telling it what the data is it's looking for. I'm going to go back and you can see down here I've got a couple of options. I'm restoring either clip still or what's called extended clip. We'll get to that in a second. And then the restore type is either replace or append. Right now my frame memory is empty. You can see at the very top of the screen it says I have 862 frames free and extended 862 frames which is kind of the second part of the memory. There's two different numbers that you'll see when the frame memory is empty and you're running in 1080i. If it's 862 frames, it means that I'm actually capturing the embedded audio that comes with that, which of course takes a little bit of the RAM capacity away. If I wasn't capturing embedded audio, it would say 1,030 frames on each one of those. So I'm going to replace, which would erase everything if it wasn't empty, or I can hit append, which would leave the stuff in there and then just add new items to it. So I'm going to hit replace. I'm going to restore start. And basically what this is saying is make sure your deck is queued up, and when you roll it, hit yes to start it. So I'm going to come over to my device control module, hit play, and hit yes at the same time. And basically what's going on now is it's playing real time. You can see everything that was backed up. It's going to play video followed by key. Here's a little background that was in there. And in a second, you'll see a whole bunch of stills go by fast. And you'll notice here that it could tell the instant it was finished. Restore was completed. It was that fast. In this particular case, it took about 20 seconds or so to accomplish. And if I change back to my main file menu, you can see that now I have different folders have all been imported correctly. Here are my thumbnails that I've been using for everything. Everything's here. My clips are here. My wipes are here. Everything's been restored. Now there's one more thing to restore because I also backed up what's called the extended partition. In this case, I'm going to hit file name data again. This time I'm going to go for block number three. Now again, I put the time code of 53 seconds. I also put a little X in front of it so that I know if I'm looking through this that that's really for an extended clip. So I'm going to load it. And I'm going to go back. In this case, I'm going to select Restore Enable of Extended Clip. Okay? Now, go back to our device control module, but in this time, I already actually know where that was. So I programmed the timeline effect to automatically queue it for me. So this time, I didn't have to jog and shuttle, I just queued it up and it's ready to go. So I'm going to hit Restore Start and Play and Yes. And so here's the Extended Clip registers. Again, Video, followed by Video Key. There's a looping, little loop later, and here's the key signal for it. And it's done. And remember, when we back up and restore using this method, the embedded audio can be backed up and restored as well. So for instance, if I go to the clip menu, go into here, you can see on this clip called CGWC, there's a little A. It means that after I restored that, the embedded audio that I had backed up with it came back. So if I recall this, come into play and hit play, you can hear the audio. Now, if I come back here, backup to DDR-VTR is exactly the opposite process that we just did to restore. In this case, step one says I need to back it up. So I'm going to select what I want to back up, my clips or my extended clips. Okay. I'm going to do a backup start. Now, of course, you have to make sure that you take like an aux bus out of the switcher and send it over to a DDR or VTR with video. I'm going to hit backup start. It does a little pre-compile.
You can see that this red frame came up on the screen, which is basically a flag for the system. And we'll go over here and start my XD cam machine on record. And I'm going to hit yes. And now it's taking all the frame memories in the system and recording them onto the XD cam disk. And now it's finished. I can stop my deck, finish, and now it reminds me to go to step two, which is I got to save that data somewhere. So I'm going to hit the file name data button, and this time I'm going to select slot four, and I'm going to save it. And just because I like to do things nice and tidy, I'm going to figure out where it was. It was about 101. I'm going to hit File Edit, Rename, and I'm going to call this main for M for me. That's my code for main. And I'm going to call it 010100. That way later I can figure out what the time code is.